Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to talk about having an FOV that is blocked by tile walls and by object wall detections. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so here's the scene. We have a player. We have just a wall object that will be blocking the FOV from this chicken. And also the tile walls will be blocking. And the tiles can be specific. For instance, if we go and we can highlight this one right here, we can say uh, edit and it will bring you to the the uh, tile tab and it will have this one selected and right here we can have a tile group so we can either do this by just having them the default tile groups or we can actually specify a tile group if we wanted to i just wanted to point this out right away um, you can go to uh, group management here and you can create another group tiles and you could say that these ones are unseeable or I don't know a proper name, can't see through tiles or something like that. Just however you would word it, you could create a new tile group and then you could say that these are can't see through tiles. All right, so then that way you could have walls that can be seen through, walls that can't be seen through and stuff like this. And also you could easily leave it just default tiles because the wall check is coming from the enemy specifically. So if you have stuff that you want to check over, you just don't put this wall check um, object on it. So I'll just leave it like this. I just wanted to show that. All right, so now let's go to the uh, objects here. Let's see what's going on in here. And for this process, I decided to use kind of a child hierarchy because the only way that PGM can push information is upward. So hopefully this will make sense but we have a player here and there's really nothing special in this player the player just does everything like it normally does then we have the chicken now the chicken's default action uh, which is right here the player not in range it's just basically this will be its normal you know walking or whatever this could be a whole plethora of actions even but one the one thing that's important is that when it's the player is not in range then the is wall checking switches off and the is player found switches off. These are just created switches that are here. And while we're here, uh, I also have an object connection tab and a field of vision. The field of vision is just that the range that you see when we start the, we're just right here, this big range, that's the field of vision. And then we also have a connected object, which we'll get to here. It's the, um, the spawner. So it's a, I'll just rename this here wall check spawner all right no switches but it is a child and that's that's the important part all right so the one thing is is that when it, the player is discovered within that aggro range and notice i just did player group in my games i always keep the player group only on the player so this works out but if you have multiple things in the player group you're definitely going to want to specify the object like that Right. So when the player is in that aggro range, then it's actually going to uh, turn on the switch that it needs to start checking. So is wall checking, okay? The switch turns on. And then we have a move template setting of off. And the reason why it's off is because of this other logic that will be happening. Because you can still be in range, but you're hiding behind a wall, right? So this in this spot is where the player's in range but you're not necessarily moving toward the player yet so in this case the move template setting is stopped all right so let's see what this is wall checking switch does and then real quick let's go back here the return link to player not in range is obviously the reverse this with this option right here of the fov check all right so that's pretty simple and also gave it a priority processing of one. All right, so what does is wall switching, what does this switch do? Okay, so the object that is connected is the wall check spawner, okay? Every enemy will have one that needs uh, to do this. And basically, it just sits there and it's just waiting for wall check. Now, while it's waiting for wall check, it has a variable for itself that is player found and it equals negative one. We go to player variable management i have this variable created called is player found starts at negative one defaults negative one negative two means that to destroy all generated wall checks because you're going to be you're going to be generating multiple of these to make it look smooth and fluid 
number one or negative one means to reset and then a negative or sorry zero means player is not found and one means player is found i just found that having a variable to define all of these things was the easiest way to do it you could have had switches but you would have had to have a switch kind of for all of these and just more logic so i found a variable to be very nice for this and it needs to be on the spawner itself all right so now the it's it's waiting for a wall check and the switch to activate the wall check is the parent objects because remember we can actually check the parent objects and when you when you go to assign this you have to find the actual a switch right so chicken and then is wall checking is on so if the parents or the chickens is wall checking is on then it's going to trigger into generate a wall check and so we're just we're just going to generate a a wall check object which we'll get to in a minute here and it's also going to be a child and this is really the, the most important part is that it's a child all right so it's generating a wall check and then it has a there's a few different things that it can do basically if the parents wall checking is is not on meaning that we're out of the fov of the chicken then it's going to activate this link to go to wait or after a certain amount of time so point two this is going to be the time of how often it checks so for instance every point two seconds it's going to spawn a new wall checker you would want to adjust this number based on if there's any performance reasons. If you're getting performance drops because you have multiple enemies on the scene, then maybe up this and see if that helps. Notice that it is an or, so either one of these, and it's processing order of one. It goes to wait, and all wait does is say that the player is not found because, or sorry, it means a reset because if, if you go over the switch here, you can see, this is one reason why I like to document on the notes. You can see all my values. Sometimes you have to refresh it. But negative one equals reset. So it's resetting the, um, the player found value. All right. And then what it does is in the wait here, it has a few different options. After 0.1 seconds, it can go right back. Or if is wall checking is off because I, I do reverse. So even though it says is on, I do the reverse value right here, meaning off and processing order of one. So if the player steps out of the FOV range, then we stop regenerating. And how we do that is we have a kill switch for all the wall checkers that are trying to check for the player. And that's negative two. That's where this negative two value comes, comes into play is it destroys all generated wall checks. All right, and then it goes back unconditionally to player is not found, negative one. It's reset. Okay, so now let's uh, check what this wall checker is doing because we know that it's basically looping through this while the player is in FOV. And then let's uh, check this wall checker here. So the wall checker, it doesn't have switches or variables, but it does have a field of vision, and it's a very tiny field of vision. It's, it's just... A distance of one and that way it can be very accurate very precise i'm going to up this to six so that we can actually see it in the play test just just for seeing purposes so for instance if i play test right now you can see that i'm in the field of vision and this checker is is trying to check but it, it keeps hitting the wall so it's never going to register as true if i leave you can see that it destroys all the check so if one is active it'll even destroy it mid mid action now if i go to a spot where it can see me it can now start to move now it can't see me now it sees me and now it moves and stuff like that so that's generally how it's working so in the logic of the the wall check it's seeking so first we are moving to the player group right i set the move speed to be pretty high 13 you don't want it too high because you don't want it to go through the walls, but you want it high enough to, to look right. And so here's the field of vision. So we have three different options. We can either hit a wall or we can hit the player or we can be destroyed if we're reset. 
So this is checking if the player's is found is negative two, which if we remember, negative two is destroy all generated wall checks. So this is the kill switch for, for every active wall check. Then we have a couple conditions for the hit wall. So the first one is to contact a tile wall, uh, a tile wall detection. All right. And we can specify this even further. If you remember when we created this group, can't see through tiles, we could specify and say set by target, uh, tile group can't see through tiles. So this would mean that every tile that is this group is the only one that it will sense, but by unselecting it, that means that it's actually looking for any group. So it doesn't matter which one I have selected right now, it's actually going to be detecting any group, but to specify it, you would uh, click on, on click on that. And then we have the other one, an or discover in range of this FOV, remember, by a group that I called wall. So this was a object group. So if we go to settings, group management, this object group, you see I have a neutral, I almost always have a neutral in my game. And then a wall, this would be for environmental objects that you have out on this on the thing that you don't want movement against. So I made sure that that was the uh, check. Now you might have some more, let's say that you actually have check, let's say that your enemies, you want to block the bullet as well. Well, then you would go to th this one discovered object, you would say or and you would say the enemy group. Okay, and so now that would also block if enemies are in the way, or say you have big enemies, you would create a group called big enemies, and then you would have big enemies be the blocker. So this is where you would add groups that would be um, that would stop the progression other than just the player. All right, and then the last one is obviously discovering the player. And again, when you have a field of vision of just the, the small size of one, it's very precise. But I'll, I'll just keep it at, at a bigger number for this tutorial or for this uh, video. So when we hit a wall, we're going to say player found is zero. And if you remember, and again, this is the parent. So we're updating the parent spawner that the player found is zero, meaning that it, the player was not found, it hit a wall. And maybe I should say hit a wall on the description it makes more sense. And then on this one, the hit player is, it changes it to player found of one, which means that the player is found. And then as soon as it does that, it destroys itself. And then obviously make sure that none is in the restoring condition. All right, so now let's see exactly where this value goes into play. Back in the spawner, we have two actions right here. We have player is found and player not found. So if we go here, the switch or the uh, trigger or condition is going to be if this object self is player found equals one, because that means the player is found. And so obviously this one is going to be if the player is zero. So if it's one, it's going to go to player found and it's going to turn its parents is player found switch on. All right, and this will make sense here in a minute. Otherwise, it's going to turn its player found is off. And then it's going to unconditionally go back to wait so that it can spawn more generation checks if it needs to, or go to the stop gen and wait for the FOV. Now in the chicken, when we're in range, so when we're in range, the spawn checks going and the wall checks going but we don't move towards the player until the is player found switch is on. And that is player found switch is not turned on unless the player is found. And that player is not found unless that wall check object deems it so and passes it up. So you can see that what, what I meant by I have a child kind of passing system is we have the, the chicken which now can just be very specific in its range of actions. It's got a wall spawner that is very specific in its range of actions. It generates and then it passes the information back to the parent on what the status is. And then you have the wall check, which is very specific in its actions. It's either checking if a wall is hit or the player is hit. And then the, the wall, this is just a random object. 
and so yeah you can really see how this works in in the in the preview here as soon as i enter the fov the spawner starts spawning those things it then detects that this is a wall object doesn't work now it detects that i'm in range so it will work and now I'll run around and now it's detecting that there's a uh, tile wall here, so it will not work. And then as soon as I go back down, it will start detecting again. And then if I get out of range, it will stop as well. So yeah, that's basically it. This sample project will be on my itch page and any questions, comments below, uh, Steam forms, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.